Hi, I'm Hannah Laird with The Sensory Kitchen, and today we're going to show you how to set up the Warner Broxer Shear Forced Test Machine. So first you're going to take the blade holder and the pin and attach it to the machine holder and insert it into this holder by putting the pin inside to adhere it to the machine. Sticking the pin into the machine, it'll hold the blade holder. And next, we're going to attach the actual Warner Blaxer shear blade. But to do this, we need to make sure that it goes inside this groove that's right there. And so we're going to need to move the machine down so we can attach the blade while it's fitting in the groove to avoid damage to the blade. So we're going to take these screws and screw them in to the blade and the blade holder to adhere the blade to the machine. And now we have set up the Warner Boxer Shear Force machine. When testing for Warner Boxer Shear Force, we actually use this to core the meat samples. The cores from this are what's used to put inside the machine and used to test how tough the meat is. Um, we have here pork loins and pork tenderloins. Uh, they were cooked earlier this morning to a specific degree of doneness. They were put in the cooler so they'd all be the same uh, temperature when we do the cores. This is important because it helps with consistency whenever running the cores and it helps you get just to get a cleaner core at the end. So when actually taking cores of the samples, you want to make sure to get six cores from each product. This makes sure you get an, get an accurate measurement from the steak itself and not something where you catch a fat pocket or a piece of connective tissue or something like that that will throw off your results. So when coring, you're going to cut into the steak off and that will show you the muscle fibers. When coring, you want to make sure to take your cores parallel to the muscle fibers. So that way you actually get a test of the tenderness of the muscle fibers themselves and not just a, a random assortment of the meat. As you can see in this loin chop, these are the directions of the muscle fibers. So we're gonna take the core and we're gonna run them a lot parallel to the muscle fibers in order to get our cores. It's important to use a little bit of force but not push too much and just use a twisting motion. If you push harder than instead of just spinning, it's actually going to give you some ugly cores and they won't all be uniform. And there's our first core. As you can see, it's a, it's a decent core and you can see along the size that we did in fact get all the uh, muscle fibers. And whenever you run it in the machine, the blade will actually cut through the middle of the core. As I said earlier, you want to try to get six cores from each steak, and we're going to attempt to do this. I find it easier to go ahead and just keep cutting um, a fresh side every time. That way you can always see which way your muscle fibers are going. And you just do the same thing six times. I start in the middle just to get to make sure I get the whole meat and I don't start on the side where there's fat or connective tissue or if I start too far on the other side I'm not going to get a long enough core. So Sometimes whenever the meat core gets stuck we use the end of a pencil eraser just to push it through and it doesn't mess up the core or anything.
important to look at each core after you core it to make sure you get a, a uniform core and you make sure that the muscle fibers are in fact running parallel so the test will be accurate. Here we have our full six cores. Um, it was cutting it close, but we made it. If you do find something, a product that's too small, like our pork tenderloin we will have in a minute, uh, you can run this test accurately with four, but you prefer six. When coring a smaller product, like a pork tenderloin, uh, you still have to cut the edge to make sure, to see which way the muscle fibers are running, but you want to get as close as you can to the edge so you're not wasting any product. Um, we can see just by cutting that up, it's tenderloins are running straight up and down, and so that's how we're going to core them. Tenderloins are sometimes difficult to core because of how tender they are. If you use too much force or if they're cooked to a lower degree than doneness, they have a tendency to just fall apart in your hand. So that's why, for, especially for tenderloins, it's extra important to be sure to let them sit and rest after cooking and come down to room temperature or even leave them in the cooler like we did. Um, here's our first core. Uh, it turned out pretty good. We got all the muscle fibers and we actually held it together. As I said earlier, something this small, you don't always get six cores. As long as you get at least four, that's okay, and you can run anyway. Um, trying to get this together isn't going to do you any good because it's not going to give you a uniform core. So out of a pork loin, we had six, and we got five out of our tender loin, which will be perfectly fine for our testing. In industry, they talk about an hourglass-shaped core. That's something you don't want to do because it's thinner in the middle, and it's not uniform, and won't give you a accurate description of a core that is perfectly uniform. This tends to happen on something like tenderloins. If they're cooked to a lower degree in the doneness, um, you can force too hard and it'll actually just twist and twist and you'll get almost a, a hourglass shaped form to where in the middle it's thinner and the outer it widens out. I'm going to see if I can get an hourglass shaped form for y'all. Um, these pork loins were cooked to a little bit higher degree of doneness so it may not be as easy. Uh, but we're going to try. This one isn't quite hourglass, but it is kind of corkscrew looking. It's not real uniform in shape as some of these others. And you can see how it's misshapen. It, it just doesn't, it doesn't give you quite as good results as a uh, more uniform core. This is at least a good description of one that is not uniform and one that I probably would not keep and I would try to get another one. In the United Testing System, this is the system we use uh, here at Texas A&M. Um, this is how we start off every time we test, uh, check for tenderness. First off, you go to specimen uh, preparation. You cl check which test you want, whether it's slice shear or Warner Brotzler shear force. So we're going to double click on Warner Brotzler. Once you get this screen, you're going to go ahead and put in a name. Put in my name just for to have a name in there. And then you're going to go ahead and create a batch. Creating a batch, you can only do so many at a time, but it depends on how many samples you're running. And in the batch, the number counts not how many samples you're testing, but how many actual cores you have. So if you're doing 10 samples, you're going to have 60 cores. So we're going to create a batch of 60. Once you have that, it pops up, and you have 1 through 60, and you'll go to specimen testing. And this brings us to our actual testing page. <coughs> Whenever we're testing, we're looking at the Y max. The Y max shows you how many kilograms of force it takes to, uh, to cut through the muscle fibers. So whenever you start, it's important to make sure to zero out the machine. When, when you zero out the machine, you want to get it ready for um, as you would actually test the core. So we're going to go ahead and jog it down. And you want to jog it down to enough to where really you can just fit the core in um, and then not too much further than that. Uh, this is because you don't want the machine running uh, further than it has to because the further it goes, the more friction it has rubbing against the machine and the more varied your results will be. So 
we had the machine set up ready, the same, the distance we want it to be. We're going to go ahead and test it. You have to test it every 10 samples. So every 10 samples or every 60 cores. Hit T twice. And the machine's going to go ahead and start coming down as if there was a sample there to cut through. When finished, you can see our Y max was 0 0.0744. Uh, this is a little bit higher than we want. We want it to be 0 0.04 or lower. And so to do to change that, you would just mess around with the box here and try to get it uh, to where it's not touching the blade and give as little friction as possible. And then you just keep running it until you get the numbers you want. This is what we're looking at to determine how much force it takes to push through uh, the muscle fibers. So you want this number right here to be 0 0.04 or lower. We're gonna keep working this until we get the right number. Um, it's important to take into account the testing uh, to zero out your scale whenever you create your batch because every time we run this as zeroing, it counts as one of the samples they're testing. Um, we got this one at 0 0.0308, which is good. It's below our 0 0.04 number. We'd go ahead and write that down as our uh, Y max zero number, and we would go ahead and start testing. So whenever we're actually gonna core, we're gonna go ahead and put the core into the machine. Whenever you put it in the machine, you wanna make sure to test the middle of the meat sample. That's because if you get further out to the edges, one way or the other, it's gonna be more cooked on the ends and it's not gonna be the true tenderness you wanna find in the middle of the product. So you situate it in and fit it right to where the V is gonna hit it perfectly in the middle. Once situated, you have it ready to go, you're going to hit T twice again and go ahead and run the machine. Here's our tenderness value. It's uh, 1.2901. That is how many kilograms it takes to push through the muscle fiber and actually break through them. This is the number you write down every time whenever you're recording your results. And you're going to keep doing this for every sample you have, all six cores. So here's our next number. As you can see, it's not the same. It's 2.2944. It's a little bit different. This is kind of why we take six cores. Uh, it, you can average them out at the end and that'll be your actual tenderness value because as you core through a product, you hit fat pockets, you hit uh, areas of connective tissue, all that differ in the tenderness of the meat. Once again, that's the number you're going to write down. Be sure to pull out the old cores every time. That way it doesn't affect your values. Make sure it's clear and then keep running. one point nine seven four nine that's closer to the first one but again this is all going to be averaged out in the end and it's okay then all the way through sometimes it will uh, catch a piece of connective tissue or something like that doesn't break it's, you want to make sure to clean out the groove where the meat sample is pushed through uh, in between every sample just because if you move on from sample to sample whether it be like we're doing here a loin to a tenderloin there's different tendernesses in these cuts and you want to make sure the excess meat stored in this cavity does not affect anything so we just use a paper clip and you can see what falls out down there. We're just trying to clear it out as much as we can. You can also use a distilled water bottle to squirt down in there or something just to clear it out. So you take it and you can just spray it on both sides. Um, it can help get the grease out. It can get extra parts of the muscle fibers out. Whatever's left in there you want out. You, basically you want it to be the new test every time you change samples. The same test, we're going to run our brats, but we're going to do it on our tenderloins. Um, it's the same process every time. However, the tenderloins are a little bit smaller, so it is a little bit harder to get them in the middle, but do your best to make sure that you're in that middle, more in the pinkish part than it is in the gray on each side. We're doing the same process. I have it situated in the middle as close as we can, and we're going to go ahead and keep running.
And as we did for the loin, uh, we're going to write down our Y max. Our Y max for this one was 1.7674. And that just means there's 1.7674 kilograms of pressure exerted on that uh, core to tear the muscle fibers. So again, this time we had 2.0324 for our Y-Max. We're going to go ahead and record that. Some of these uh, cores are not always perfectly flat, so sometimes you have to twist them and turn them. You just want to make sure that they fit perfectly in the middle. Make sure to clear out the groove and uh, under the blade. We're going to fit it in and hit T twice. And for our last one, you get 1.5551. After recording that, you're all done out of samples. To get it out of this uh, screen, you're going to go ahead and hit Q. And that's going to take you back to the main page. Um, if your machine saves at this point, if you have memory on your computer, you can go ahead and do that. Uh, we record on paper here because we have an old machine. But uh, to get out of all this, you're just going to hit exit out of all the screens and you can go ahead and hit quit and that takes you away to your uh, main screen of your computer. Now you need to clean up and uh, break down the machine. So what we do, you unscrew the bolts onto the blade, off of the blade, to take off the blade from the holder. Uh, this is really just the exact opposite of what you did to set up. Um, I like to take the blade off while it's in the groove. That way you can minimize as much chance or as many chances of messing up the machine, uh, breaking the blade, breaking on the little holder or anything like that. But once the blade's off, you can go ahead and fast jog it up. And you want to get it high enough to where you can pull the blade out without bumping into it, out bumping into the bottom of the holder. So that's high enough. We're going to pull it out. To clean it, we just use distilled water, spray it real good on each side. And then we take a napkin and wipe it off and try to get all the residue off that we can. Once that's accomplished, you can put the blade back where y'all keep it. You can pull the pin out and remove the blade holder. And then the breakdown is complete. Uh, you need to make sure to finish cleaning. You pull all the cores out and throw them in the trash can. You can use a paper clip and distilled water to get all the extra meat out that was, has been left over or that may be left behind and give it a good spray with your distilled water bottle. Once you have that, you can use a napkin, a Clorox wipe, whatever you want to use, and just get all the residue, the water, and the meat out of this bin. And once you're done with that, that's all that's left. Uh, that's the setup and uh, running and takedown of the Warner Boston machine.